Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tape, and today you join me for episode 12 of Fall of Kerbin. And today we start launching three S4F Falcons towards Valley's Guard. Yes, these are our new fighters, and they need to head over to Valley's Guard to take out the Air Force there, because today we are pushing back and we are going to take back Valley's Guard. Because Penguin, well, the Corollans, they've had it for too long. Like, two or three turns, that's far too long, and we can't let them keep launching tanks from there, because it gives them good access to our cities. So we're going to head on up there, and we're going to go shoot them down. We do get a nice uh, shot of us flying over the ocean, just in formation. Um, BD Armory seems to work much better with Wingman when you have faster planes, which is good. These are quite fast, um, they have fairly limited fuel, so... Getting back may be a little bit of a trouble, but anyway, we arrive at Valley's Guard, and there's a bunch of AA defenses over there, so what I do is I just kind of fly just inside of the range of the radar. The radar's like, oh shit, fighters, and then it's going to send up um, the Corollan fighters, as you can see here. It takes them a while to take off, and we just kind of skirt around for a bit. But yes, now we can avoid the AA guns and hopefully shoot them down. However, when I was flying my plane... I turn on mouse aim flight mod and it just sort of locks up my controls a bit and I sort of just tumble into a dive which I can't really recover from with mouse aim flight mod. And then I turn on SAS and things and we can fly again but it means I can't accurately aim with my plane. So what I should have done is um, put this on guard mode straight away and let the uh, fighters, you know, fire it out. It looks like we've just taken out a vulture there. Um, it's on fire, it's burning, tumbling towards the ground which is good for us right now. Um, but me not being able to fight properly is going to make this kind of difficult. Um, eventually I do, you know, get the good sense to put it on, uh, just flight and make it fly itself because apparently I can't fly it. I'm not sure if, I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, so basically, um, after we watch the first vulture tumble into the ground rather nicely, um, we can engage in the rest of the dogfight. Now, Penguin has two attackers here, which pose a problem because although they're slower and they're loaded with bombs, they do have a tail gun, which is super useful if someone's chasing you. You just shoot them in the back. Um, and also the TE Swift... Oh, shit, yeah, there goes our Falcon. Um, uh, the first casualty for the uh, Cathenian Air Force. Just kind of explodes. Um, and the TE-16 Swift, I believe it is, um, the little interceptor, is mind-blowingly fast and hard to shoot at. And you can see the other Falcon is taking fire from that tail gun right there, which is proving super useful. We tried and open up on this guy, but uh, he's evading just enough. It seems like we can't quite get our shot on. Uh, maybe if the, if the pilot would just pitch a little more. But yeah, and then we have to start evading because the Swift is on our ass, and it's ridiculously fast which isn't super great. I decided to fly myself briefly just to get out of the way of this uh, Swift because, yeah, I don't know, guard mode isn't super good at not getting shot. Annoyingly, I'm not super good at getting shots without uh, mouse and flight mod. I do try um, because I have had successful dogs fights in the past with um, out mouse and flight mod, but uh, I don't know, it, I was just kind of having none of it. You can see I just can't keep the reticule on the right place and I'm just having no luck. So I put this back on guard mode with the hope that it'll swing around quickly and shoot the swift. However, it just seems to sort of, I don't know, just sort of fly away for a bit. Um, so this dogfight isn't going great. I'm not even sure where my other wingman is. I roll over the top to try and take down this, um, uh, pet, uh, this uh, attacker while I watch my wingman tumble into the ground. Um, which isn't super great, and then I again, since this isn't doing much, try and shoot down this uh, plane, which uh, is proving kind of difficult because, again, no mouse aim flight mod. Then I try and turn on mouse aim flight mod, and it sort of works, but not quite right. I think maybe I, I do have uh, improved chase cam on right now, but I just have very little clue what's going on. Anyway, we do get behind him and almost get some shots on, and then he just pulls up vertically, and I'm like, yeah, okay, this is a fighter jet, I can do that, and then I'm like, oh wait, this isn't a fighter jet, this is a World War II fighter. I try and chase him, but stall out, but luckily, me chasing him has also also causes him to stall out. We don't see this, and it's actually mostly conjecture, because I'm actually evading um, poorly, because my wing just get, got shot off, and then I tumble into the ground. I'm thinking at this point, oh Christ, they still have an attacker and an interceptor, However, after I um, tumble to the ground, crash horribly, and die, I switch to the Swift, and it's still uh, still flying. And then 
the vulture appears to be on the ground. If you watch that back, you can see the vessel switcher on the left switches out at something. So I think what happened is the vulture stalled and it crashed. So all in all, we took out two attackers for the cost of three fighters. Not super happy about that. But it means they have no bombs, which means we can roll in our tanks. So I bring in this supply unit to recover the, uh, to repair the front panel of that armor from the uh, urban combat in, it engaged in in Penguin's turn. It, uh, they slaughtered Penguin's tanks. And then after a bit of driving, we roll in to Valley's Guard. Now this isn't great because we don't have a main battle tank. And outside of urban combat, light tanks and tank destroyers aren't super great. Um, so... We're going to have some trouble. Anyway, the first thing that happens is the Swift takes off. Now, this isn't too much of a problem, because while it can strafe us with its guns, it doesn't have any bombs. So, although we did lose all of those fighters and only took out two planes, um, rather embarrassingly for the Cathenian Air Force, uh, we did get rid of all of the bombs, which means we only have to deal with one little attacker. Um, <clears throat> Not attacker, interceptor, I believe this is. So, actually, my tank destroyers just managed to get a few shots near it. They don't do anything, but... Um, it's uh, still nice to see, and then we watch it fly in. I just want to see what it's doing. It doesn't really look like it's lining up to strafe, but it is coming near us. Anyway, the light tank um, will open up in 1.5 kilometers from the um, aircraft, and we'll be able to shoot it down hopefully quite quickly. It can only fire eight rounds before having to reload, but it seems like one finds its mark rather gloriously. However, given that this is pretty much 90% engine, it just sort of keeps flying. It looks like it's about to go into a flat spin, but the pilot keeps it under control rather impressively. And it comes back around for another, another go. So we try and shoot it down again. However, this time we're unsuccessful at getting any hits. I think the first one was kind of lucky, actually. Um, which is a little worrying, because if this does decide to actually strafe us, which it hasn't tried yet, it is going to be a problem. And after multiple attempts trying to shoot this down, I just it, just it just won't work. And eventually, actually, it learns to go high enough that I can't shoot it. You can see my gun at maximum pitch will not get anywhere near it. And this is worrying, because if it does decide to open up, it could take this out. It has some pretty decent guns. So anyway, I moved this to a ridge um, a little later. Uh, you can see how much darker it is now, how long it took me to figure this out. So I get on a ridge so I can improve the um, the uh, angle of my gun. And I'm getting ready to shoot it, and all is good, uh, because I know that I can get this on target, because I did this like a bunch of times. <laughs> it took me ages. But then, it seems as if the Swift is moving rather erratically, and finally, it has gone into a flat spin for lack of a tailplane. Um, and we can watch it tumble into the ground quite nicely. Um, it, my uh, tank does open up on it, but it doesn't hit. And then we're going to watch this just hit the ground and bounce. Uh, <laughs> so what happened here is I accidentally had the uh, unbreakable joints cheat on. That was only because I needed to land this after the dogfight and, um, and uh, I didn't want to explode it because I don't have the craft file, so I couldn't relaunch it if I did explode it. Um, so yeah, I forgot to turn that off. Didn't really benefit me, may have benefited Penguin, but hey, that's uh, my fault. Anyway, we rid, rid the tank of life and move over to Cathenia's Valley. Well, we are launching our World War I bomber. Still alive, still kicking ass. Um, so there's still quite a lot of stuff at Valley's Guard. There are th uh, three 20mm emplacements, two 40mm emplacements, and two self-propelled guns, which have three and tri explosive shells, which aren't that worrying, but still, we'd like to take out some of that. I'm going to go for the 40mm emplacements, because I think those will be the most deadly. So yeah, we've loaded this up with five 1,000-pound bombs, pretty much the worst payload you could use for destroying a lot of small targets, um, as you will see, um, which was sort of foolish of me, but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I do things. Anyway, so we're going to take a run across. Um, we want to basically soften this up for the tanks. We've dropped our first bomb, and we're going to drop our second one on this 20mm emplacement. And I uh, did notice, actually, that it looks like the other 20mm emplacement right there is actually under the runway. So that's kind of annoying. So I don't bother dropping a bomb on that, because it would have been a waste. And yeah, we carry on. I've only dropped two, but I'm going to come back around. I don't want to be, like, diving down and around, because that's a good way to get shot down. I mean, we've got plenty of time, but some 3-inch shells do start flying in. And we have to evade a little bit. Luckily, we're pretty much high enough that it's going to be really difficult for them to get an accurate shot on me. But I do have to do some evading because we need this bomb where it's being super useful to us. Um, it helped us bomb out Valley's Guard last time as well. Anyway, neither of those bombs found their mark annoyingly. I think they just missed. So I'm coming back around. I've still got three 1,000 pound bombs. And if, as long as I can take out the 40 mils, I'm not too worried. 
um, because they're fairly accurate and fairly deadly to uh, small tanks. So we drop another bomb, um, and then we line up again to drop another bomb, and if though both of those hit, we'll have one left to hopefully take out one of the 20 millimeters because, um, well, we don't want to have to deal with too much deal resistance without any main battle tanks. Anyway, this time, the bombs are much more successful, um, and they find their mark, both of them actually, and destroy the 40 millimeter emplacements. Pretty expensive, considering those are pretty cheap units that I just exploded um, with 1,000 pound bombs. Definitely should have brought some smaller bombs, but hey, doesn't matter. Everything's fine. Um, anyway, we do get some more three-inch shells coming in. They're being a little bit annoying, but yeah, it's fine. So we turn around and we drop our final bomb on this 20 millimeter emplacement and pull out before we even get close, um, because we don't want to get shot at it again because I'm getting a little worried that I'm gonna lose this bomber. Anyway, the bomb finds its mark, destroys that, and we're gonna head home. So now the tanks can roll in and hopefully not have too much trouble. Now the tank destroyers have pretty limited pitch, and the light tank is, well, I think the light tank's gonna be the most useful because it has the same amount of armor and it has a pretty fast firing gun, but the tank destroyers have 105 millimeter shells, um, which is gonna be pretty useful. So we form up our tanks just on the edge, and uh, now it's time to turn off the UI, because you can know roughly where the enemy tanks are now, but now we turn off the UI, so you have to pretty much drive around blind and hope that you get the shot in first. Uh, Penguin did this in the urban combat, which makes it a little more stressful, and I have to tell you, in just a sea of kind of nondescript green, it's pretty horrifying. I keep seeing the control tower and freaking out that it's a 20 millimeter emplacement. You can see I'm edging towards it like, oh god, oh god, it turns out it's just a tower. Anyway, apparently we find something over there. It's a, I believe it's a 20 millimeter emplacement, and we start getting some shots in. Uh, I think that one missed. Um, but if we back up a little bit, we should be... Oh no, we're gonna go forward um, and try and get another shot in there because this is, I think, the furthest one from the runway. So if we can take this, we can just close in on the runway and shut down everything else. Um, so we're gonna just land that. Does it hit? Uh, no, not quite. It doesn't seem to be returning fire, which is quite nice. Maybe we're just out of range, but I don't think we're out of range. Maybe it can't see us, but we can see it. I don't know. Or maybe it's because guard mode can see it and can arc its shells. I honestly don't know. Um, I'm having a little trouble actually seeing the target because my post-production window is a little lower resolution than it should be. Um, but yeah, we just keep um, lobbing shells at it until it explodes, which it does there. And it drops off the vessel switcher so we know it's dead, um, which is good. So now I'm going to roll down this way because I've spied something over the ridge. Turns out it's just... Um, I think the control tower, and I think I just fired at the radar station on it, so I was like, oh god, and I start running into this little um, dip in the ground so I can hide from gunfire. Then we bring up, um, uh, oh yeah, then we just hide in this little dip right here. And then we bring up the uh, light tank. On the way, I get a little freaked out because I actually don't know where my tank destroyer is. I'm like, is it over here? Oh no, no, it, it's not over there. It's it's to the left. I'm, I was very confused at this point. You can see I start turning over to the left. I'm like, where is it? Where is it? I'm freaking out because I'm thinking I'm going to get shot. Luckily, I was actually pretty safe here. And eventually, I do find the tank destroyer. It's pretty stressful doing this without the markers. Um, but it does make it a little more uh, realistic and a little fairer to the uh, defenders. Anyway, so we bring in the uh, other tank destroyer. And we're just going to roll up this hill um, and go and hunt down some of our enemies, uh, some of the enemy units. And yeah, that's exactly what we do. We rolled up here, and then we start spying the runway in the control tower that I thought was uh, an emplacement. And then we're gonna start turning to the left because a 3-inch shell has been hauled at us. Luckily, 3-inch shells are about 75 millimeters. Um, oh, took a big hit in the front, and they're high explosive, so they don't do much to armor, whereas these are 105 millimeter, I think high explosive, but against unarmored units, which is pretty good. And the 3-inch uh, gun carry is getting some pretty good shots on us, but uh, it's, it, 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 it isn't doing too much damage. This armor's fairly decent. There's only one layer, but it's, you know, it's fairly good. Um, I get really squirrely, because I'm really worried that the tank's going to explode, so you can see I'm kind of driving all over the place, backing up, making turns. It's actually kind of a annoying to watch, um, but I kind of was a little worried that I was gonna get killed. But yeah, the three-inch shells aren't super effective, although in the urban combat Penguin did in his turn against my tanks, I had a World War One tank there, um, which was a heavy tank, but it had a three-inch gun, and it pretty much wasted two of Penguin's tanks, but that was mostly because it just wouldn't die. Um, so if you hit stuff enough with three-inch shells, it does die. I was very proud of that World War One tank. Held its own better than it ever did in World War One against World War Two tanks, which is 
Kind of annoying. If it had done that well in World War One, we probably wouldn't be fighting for Valley's Guard right now. Anyway, we did take a hit there, which has done heat up the panels, which is worrying me, which causes me to turn 90 degrees. This actually isn't intentional. I have really real trouble turning this accurately. It kind of overturns way too much, so it kind of squirrels when I try and dodge shells. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, this is going on a while. Um, I only have 50 shells in these tank destroyers because they're quite small, and um, shell... Uh, boxes are pretty big and they don't carry a lot of rounds in them. Anyway, eventually I finally get in a killing blow um, and we don't have to deal with that anymore. Bit of a long fight against a small gun, but you know. Anyway, so we seem to be in a safe position now, so I'm going to bring up the rest of the tanks. I would do this with Burn Together, but they squirrel around so much. They just turn left and right and it's so annoying. Um, anyway, then we also bring up the light tank because I think this is going to be most useful for the next part because there's some uh, fast firing weapons down there and I don't know exactly where they are, so it would be nice to have 360 degree articulation because the tank destroyers can only really aim in front of them. Anyway, so yeah, we roll this um, over this ridge, hoping to find the 20mm emplacement and take it out straight away. Um, there is still another 3 inch gun down there, I'm not entirely sure where it is. I'm trying to keep the camera close to the tank uh, so that I'm not, you know, cheating and seeing everything, but I do occasionally see a little bit over the ridge and be like, yeah, there's some stuff. Anyway, so I'm inching forward so that I can back the hell up when a bunch of shells start flying in. Uh, but hopefully, I can put a few 20mm rounds in there and take out uh, our enemies. Because, you know, we need to take this back. Uh, I'm probably not going to be able to hold Valley's Guard for long, but uh, it would be nice to at least tie up some of Penguin's resources next turn. Anyway, so the tank does open up on the radar station, which is annoying, because I kind of would have liked to keep that. <laughs> because if I put some planes here, the radar station would be really useful. But apparently not. Anyway, we find a, um, I think... I'm not sure what was down there, but it exploded. I think it may have been the final 3-inch gun, um, or... I don't know, maybe not. Anyway, so... Whoa, it seems to still be alive, though. Um, in fact, it's firing 3-inch shells. Yeah, that was a 3-inch gun, um, <laughs> which is kind of worrying. And then a bunch of 20mm rounds fly in from one of the emplacements, so I back the hell up, because there's a lot of them. They're not very accurate, because we're quite far out, um, but they are flying in rather fast, and uh, I don't want to lose this light tank, because this is pretty much the only thing I'm going to have here that might have a chance of shooting down Penguin's planes um, when they come in next turn to try and clean me out of here. So what I decided to do is bring up one of the tank destroyers, pump a 105mm shell into either, well, both of them, um, and uh, have this done with. So it uh, quickly sees the the three inch gun um, after it gets shot by it once. Oh uh, yeah, there we go, and then we pump a shell into that. Uh, it dies instantly, apparently, which would have been nice last time we were fighting the three inch gun. And then uh, the 20 mils are so inaccurate that I kind of stopped worrying about them um, because they're not gonna get enough on target to destroy me. So I fire a 105 millimeter shell over there and it destroys it. Quite, oh no. Does it? Yeah, looks destroyed. So that's good. Anyway, I'm going to bring that other tank up there just in case either of those vehicles decides to, um, decides to, you know, fight a little bit more when I roll down the hill. So we're just going to have the tank destroyers pumping rounds over there. Um, if Penguin does roll up to these, uh, to Valley's Guard, he'll have a, with tanks, then he's going to have a nasty surprise from the tank destroyers. Um, but I imagine he's probably just going to send in his Air Force, uh, which will be a nasty surprise for my tanks. Uh, especially given that the, uh, um, the, the only thing that can shoot down planes is, uh, the light tank, and it isn't super good at it. Anyway, but still, let's, uh, let's not revel, let's revel in our victory rather than think about, thinking about our imposing doom. So we roll this down the hill, shoot up some of the supply trucks, because I don't think I can steal them. I honestly, um, there's a lot of rules in this, and I'm also, honestly a little, uh, vague on some of them. Um, anyway, so we destroy both of them, and, uh, now we're gonna roll up to the tower, um, just shoot them, you know, don't even take a surrender, just murder, just kill, no, we'll take a surrender, um, and we'll put them in a POW camp, a super nice one, um, because we're good people, and we got a lot of money, because we're capitalist, um, <laughs> but anyway, moving on from that, reveling in the glory that Valley's Guard, once again, is ours, we're gonna send out a, um, P11A Valkyrie, no, P11B Valkyrie, um, to go and try and soften up some of Penguin's navy, because Osiris Fortress is under pretty serious threat right now, there's a large carrier group rolling up, and we don't really want to have to deal with a carrier. So we send this out with an armor-piercing bomb. We roll in. We're going to try and drop it on there. Um, however, obviously, it's an aircraft carrier, so it has aircraft on it. So hopefully I'm going to be able to get out of the way 
before I get shot down by the huge amount of anti-aircraft fire or the fighter jets, which we see take the fighter planes. Why do I keep saying jets? Anyway, we see them taking off there, kind of doing a nosedive, kind of weird. Um, but yeah, I have to kind of tell them to take off because of the way, you know, various things work. But yeah, we got a nice shot of them kind of nosediving like the foolish Cruolans they are. And we start rolling in. However, it seems like the planes are sort of exploding. I don't know if that's a glitch or poor design um, on Penguin's part, but I don't think they're going to be a problem. Um, this does seem to happen frequently, but yeah. Anyway, so uh, I seem to have also evaded most of the uh, anti-aircraft fire for now, which has been super lucky. And then I drop the bomb. Um, I'm doing horizontal bombing, which we know is a pretty hard thing to do with very fast planes. I probably should have dive bombed. Um, but then you're probably going to lose the plane. However, it probably would have been acceptable to lose the plane to take out a carrier, because even though those fighters exploded, I think it's glitches, so Penguin can probably just relaunch them. Um, and yeah, anyway, so the bomb falls just past the carrier, which is super annoying, and it doesn't get destroyed. However, it seems like we've avoided most of the gunfire. A few three-inch shells come for us, but we'll have no problem avoiding them. But yeah, basically, um, having a carrier up here is going to be super helpful to, to the Corolla war effort taking out my fleet because if they can get a few bombs on target uh, they could take out some cruisers uh, over at Osiris Fortress which isn't good because right now I have a I think I have a slight naval superiority naval advantage in an all-out gunfight but uh, I don't have a carrier down here anyway we can see that the carrier is fine except littered with dead aircraft from I don't know uh, uh, honestly, I don't know. The carriers are very glitchy. It's actually quite hard to get them to work at all in this game. Anyway, over at Osiris Bay, um, we're launching some more tanks because I have to sit on Valley's Guard for two turn. Well, um, next turn to keep it as mine. So Penguin could retake it and launch from it next turn if he takes it with his aircraft and then he can launch some tanks. So here we are in uh, Osiris Bay launching three light tanks um, to defend this because we've seen how effective they are and I'm doing some you know sneaky filming so I'm not giving away their position because Penguin won't know and that's a massive advantage to me that they can ambush him and shoot him down because I'm no doubt he'll be launching maybe five um, light tanks into the city so hopefully we can take him down with three because we have to send some stuff south. Anyway, um, we'll see that in a bit, but right now, let's get over to Osiris Fortress and look at what we're doing. We've been deploying some more ships and some uh, other things. So, what do we have here? Well, you can see right here, it's uh, the cruisers we launched last time, but let's start from uh, left to right. So here we have a coastal emplacement which can be created with supply units. This is just a 15 inch naval gun which will sit here on the ground and hopefully get a couple of shots in to destroy some of Penguin's ships if he invades Osiris Fortress because it is going to be a naval battle for this base and we intend to win and this is an advantage we can garner these ground based um, naval guns. Next is the USS Centauri, a Scimitar class cruiser with 10 8 inch guns which should be pretty formidable to anything that gets anywhere close to Osiris Fortress. It also has a fire control radar, which gives it an advantage over some of Penguin's World War I ships, which will be a pretty significant advantage given that most of his navy won't be able to start firing until they're probably already dead. Next is USS Valiant. It's a frigate. It pretty much just has two, um, well, four five-inch guns and some depth charges and a little AA gun. It's only here because we're launching another frigate down south, so we kind of had a spare one. Another Scimitar class cruiser, the USS Spartan, which we launched last turn. Um, the USS Mayfair, my World War I cruiser, which does have a fire control radar, so has an advantage over Penguin's World War I cruisers. Um, this is a ship that's already won a battle, albeit against a destroyer, and only just. And over here, a CE-1A, which is another coastal emplacement, but this has an 8-inch gun, which will fire more frequently, but pack less of a punch than the 15-inch gun. But I think some frequent firing might be quite useful. And finally is the USS Fortitude, another um, another scimitar class cruiser with 10 8-inch guns, which will pack a hell of a punch, as I've said. So yes, and over here we do have the P-11B Valkyrie that did survive the attack on the carrier, just for a little bit of air defense, I guess. And there's also a bunch of 40mm uh, emplacements around here. But yes, hopefully that will hold off the uh, Cruolan Navy. Anyway, down south we have more things going on. We've rolled in our light tank from last turn, and we've brought the two, supp two supply units, and we're spending them 
to build some emplacements. So you can see we've got a few things here. We've got three 20 millimeter emplacements and a 40 millimeter emplacement just to provide some AA defense around our forward operating base. Um, you can see there's some 20 mils here and there's also the 40 mil just to protect this side of the island chain. Also, there was a uh, supply unit left over kind of in the middle of the island chain from World War One, which I've rolled up to the other forward operating base on the other end of the island, the one Penguin calls his, and I put out some 20 millimeter emplacements because he gave the helpful suggestion last time that I should do that. Um, so yes, this is also defended quite nicely using just supply units and rolling down just behind, just almost at the um, our first forward operating base is a medium tank and a supply unit. Yes, this is a C2 Centaur. Yeah, C2 Centaur, that's the name of it. And it is a proper battle tank. It has a 76 millimeter gun. It has two layers of armor in the front. It has some very modular armor around the side, which means it can absorb a huge amount of gunfire. And this will join the rest, the other tank, which will hopefully uh, at some point roll into Cruola. And yeah, this should be pretty good. Um, and yeah, the supply unit also, probably for refueling because we've put out most of the emplacements we need to. But anyway, moving on to some other things that will be joining us in the south, our carrier group is finally underway. This is the USS Jupiter loaded with its three, well actually they were torpedo bombers, but now one of them's a torpedo bomber and uh, two of them are carrying 1600 pound bombs, because I think those are actually more effective if you do get the... Uh, um, angle right. Um, so yeah, it's also got uh, three cruisers, they're World War One cruisers, but they do have the fire control radar, so they do have the range. And the other frigate, the USS something or other. Um, <laughs> it's a Katana class frigate, I forgot to mention that, but I do tend to name the classes of all my ships after um, bladed weapons. There was the Rapier class, the Spear class, the Scimitar class, the Battle Act class, and the Jupiter-class carrier, because apparently I forgot naming conventions. Anyway, yes, this will be heading down um, south, and the, uh, if there's any submarines down there, we'll be able to use the frigate to drop some depth charges on them, and if there's anything else, we'll be able to use the cruisers to destroy them, and obviously the planes, those are also quite good. I'm also doing the uh, same thing I did last time, deploying a um, supply unit just outside the... Uh, just outside the city so that it can roll up after the battle and also maybe reduce a little bit of lag. But yes, I hope you've enjoyed this. This is the end of the episode. It's been a bit of a long one, actually, because that tank battle kind of went on for a while. But yes, it's been pretty successful. We took back Valley's Guard. We did lose... We spent a lot getting it. We lost some fighters. We had to use a bomber and our tanks. But we do have Valley's Guard now, which, if nothing else, will tie up Penguin's Air Force for next turn. Anyway, if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there's my latest episode of Prison Architect, in which we sort of crack down on violence, except not at all. The violence gets much, much worse. There's also my latest episode of Subscriber Designs, in which we have some MiGs flying around, fighting an F-15, and some pod racers, and just this giant jet, which is insanely big, and the obligatory VTOL. Because, yeah, there's also uh, links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon if, in the description if you're interested. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.